Let's apply to Central Oregon Community College. We'll start on the Oregon Goes to College website. From the College Info menu tab, we'll choose Apply to College. And that takes us to a page that has a lot of really good information about things that we can do to prepare to apply, including a list of documents or materials that we may need to gather in order to be ready to fill out the forms and some tips for how to do so successfully. Now today I know that I'm planning to apply to COCC and I've gathered all my information so I'm ready to get started. And doing that means scrolling down to a list of colleges and universities in the state and looking for COCC's link. Um, before I click on it, I'm going to scroll over and notice that there is a $25 application fee. And so I'll make a note that I need to be prepared to pay that when I complete my application. Uh, but I'll click on the link and it takes me to the college's website and to a page on the website that uh, is where I can start my application. The first thing I need to do is select the type of student that I'll be. Uh, and there's a whole list of different types of students that might uh, enroll at COCC. Now I want to make a quick note. I am currently a high school student and you may be too. Um, I am planning to graduate in spring and start at COCC in the fall after. So it could be a little bit confusing, but I am not going to choose the high school student. Choosing high school student in this context on the application means that I'm a high school student who wants to take classes before I graduate. And that's not me. I'm a high school student who is going to graduate and then take classes, so I will scroll up to first time college student. Um, that's what, uh, that's the type of student that I'll be at COCC. So I'll go ahead and click that link and it takes me to a list of steps that I'll need to take. It also gives me a reminder of what first time college student means and then that list of things that I'll need to do in order to actually step foot on campus to take classes in the fall. Um, but today I am only going to work on the first step, which is to apply for admissions, and I'll go ahead and click that link. And this gives me a few reminders about um, what those steps are, and I can click the Apply Online button. And now I can create my account. Now, as it happens, I have already created my account, and so I am going to finish my application or log in by clicking Finish Your Application. So if you already have an account, that's how you'll get there too. If you don't yet have an account, then you are going to click the button to let them know that you are in fact a real live human being. Um, find a username that you'd like to use and a password and enter that password twice and then click login. Now again, for me, I have already done that, so I am going to not create a new applicant ID, but instead finish my application, prove that I'm a real life human being, provide my applicant ID that I have already entered into the system, and my password, and click login. Okay, um, just a quick note, it did take a little while for this to, uh, for this page to come up, and so that may happen for you as well. Uh, and my best advice is to just be a little bit patient and uh, let, it, let it keep doing its thing and it will eventually come up. So once you get to this page of select an application type, you will want to select the type of application. And again, we will be first time attending college and continue. And I have a few more things to provide, including when I plan to start. And for me, that is the fall of 2021. So I'll go ahead and choose that and enter my name. And I'm going to enter my legal first and last name. And that is the name that is on my legal documents, things like my high school transcript or my driver's license if I have one, but I am going to use my legal name here. That allows the college to match up any different documents that might be coming in uh, to make sure that they connect all of the pieces together. So that is things like my social, um, 
financial aid application, for example, to make sure it gets connected to my admissions application. I want to use my legal name. I'm going to provide my middle name as well and my last name. Now, one thing to note is that questions that have a red asterisk or star are going to require a response. Those that don't, it's optional. Um, in many cases, I will still fill out the optional section because I know that it's going to give them more information to be able to make that match between pieces of the application. So I'll go ahead and fill it out. And I come to an application checklist that has these uh, blue circles with the letter I in them. And each of these is a link to a different page or section that I'm going to need to fill out. And um, I could click on those in any order that I want. I'm going to go in order. Um, once I complete one section, these will turn into big check marks to let me know that those are done. So it's very satisfying. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click legal name. And it's going to ask me to enter that information. If I had not provided my legal name before, I would edit these to make sure that they are now. Uh, but I did, and so I'm going to go to the first blank, which is my preferred first name. So this is the option. If you have a name that you prefer that people call you, this is the time that you would enter that here. Suffix is uh, anything that comes after your name, like a junior or a senior or a number. If you have that, you'll enter that in this box. And I don't, so I'll leave it blank. Other last name is if I have, for some reason, changed my name. I uh, changed my last name in particular, then I would provide the other ones that I have used here. I don't, so I'll go ahead and click continue. But I'll also make a note that I could save the work that I've done here and go back to that checklist I was just on, or I could save the work and log out and come back later to work on it. But I'm just going to go straight on through by clicking continue. And here they're asking for my mailing address. So where do I want mail to come to? And I'm going to go ahead and enter that here. The second line of an address is a really great place to put an apartment number if you have one. So I do. I'll add that there. And then click to add my city and my state. And I'll do that with a drop down menu. And I get a warning that tells me that it didn't like my, my address, and so it's giving me a suggestion, and I'm going to go ahead and say, sure, I'll take that suggestion, add my zip code, provide my county, and it, has, it pulls up what county they think I'm in based on my zip code and my phone number. And I'm going to click Continue. Okay, so then uh, it's always a good idea to read through the information here, so please take a moment to do that. I already have, so we're going to go on. Uh, Social Security number. Now you'll notice there's not a red asterisk next to this, so I'm not required to provide one. I don't need a Social Security number to apply to COCC or to attend. However, if I have a Social Security number and I'm planning to apply for federal financial aid, I will be required to provide that number, and it is easier to do it now than to come back later uh, and connect that back to my application. And so if I have a Social Security number, I'm going to add that now. Um, and then I'm going to provide my citizenship status, and for me that's a U.S. citizen, but you'll choose the one that is correct for you. Um, if you're a permanent resident, you're going to choose resident alien. Um, and if you are undocumented, you'll choose non-resident alien. Go ahead and click the one that is right for you and move on to the next question of birth date. No, that's not my birth date. And there we go. And if I am interested in letting COCC text me for uh, important information or notifications, uh, I can go ahead and add my number here again and my email. And here they're asking for an email address that is the one that I'm using for all of my college information and, and scholarship information. And I am checking it at least twice a week so that I can stay on top of things. So that's the email address I'm providing there. They've asked me to provide it two times to make sure I've given it to them correctly. 
And then I'm also going to uh, share my gender. I can choose not to if I want, but I can also choose to if I do. Same is true for ethnicity and race. I can choose to or not to answer that question. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Uh, ethnicity comes first and then interestingly there's a question about whether or not I'm a veteran of the US military in the middle and for me I'm not a veteran so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that uh, and then answer the race question and if I am um, interested I can um, check multiple boxes if I want to um, if I am not a U.S. citizen and I have a visa, I would enter that information here. That's not the case for me, so I will move on. Now, this is a question about what I'm interested in studying, and there is a description of each type of degree or certificate that I might be able to earn. Um, and for me, I'm planning to earn an Associate of Arts um, that allows me to transfer to an Oregon University, and so I'm going to choose that. But you can choose the um, type that is correct for you. So I'm going to scroll through here to find the, the subject and type of degree that I'm interested in. And there are lots of choices, so make sure that you are looking through that list and for me I'm interested in sociology as a study topic and the AAOT, the Associate of Arts Organ Transfer. And I'll click that and continue. Now I am going to provide some information about my high school and I can start by entering my high school code. Every high school in the country has a six digit code so I can go ahead and enter that there but I don't know my high school's code and it's no problem because I can look it up and I can do that by um, coming to this page where I first give my state the state that my high school is in choose Oregon and list the cities that's going to give me a list of every city in the state and I will scroll down to find my city and then scroll back up because I went way too far and then it'll give me the option to list all of the high schools in that city and it's yet one more drop down and I can choose my high school. Then I can copy all of that selective information into the data entry form and I'm back and it's provided the name of my high school. It has also uh, started to fill in some more information here. My graduation date is going to be in June of 2021. My graduation status will be a high school graduate at that time. Um, but you can choose the one that is correct for you. Again, um, there is an option to choose currently attending high school. The question is about what will your status be when you start classes at COCC. So for me, even though I have not yet graduated from high school, I will have graduated when I start. So I'm choosing high school graduate and I'll click continue. And now if I had attended any college, prior to this I would enter that information here and you'll notice that it looks very similar to the high school page every college also has a code and I would look up the college code in exactly the same way and it would enter some information um, for me I have not attended another college and so I'm going to skip this page um, but if you have you'll want to fill this out by using that college code if you've attended more than one then you will click this button after you fill this out one time to be able to do it another time for the second college. If you are like me, have nothing to enter, click continue. And now we are um, going to provide some information about our residency. So do we live in Oregon? Do we live in district? And there again are instructions or descriptions of what that means. Um, and if you are 23 years or younger, then the question is really asking about your parent or legal guardian and where they live. Um, so for me, 
I am an in-state, out-of-district student. So that means that I have lived in Oregon, but I don't live in the COCC district um, during the year prior to me starting. Um, the If you live in COCC's district, then you'll choose in-district, but if you live in Oregon but not in the district for COCC, you'll choose in-state, out-of-district. Then a question about why I'm planning to attend, and for me it's to earn a certificate or degree, so I will choose that, but you'll want to read through that list and choose the one that's right for you. And then there are some questions um, about my background. Um, the first one is about whether or not a parent has earned a four-year degree. For me, the answer is no, so I'm going to not check this box. Um, and then the second one is about speaking a language other than English at home. I speak only English at home with my family, and so I'm going to not check this box. Um, but if I spoke a language other than English at home, I would check the box and check the box and then use the scroll down menu to find the language that I speak. But for me, that's not the case, so I will uncheck that and click continue. And now this question is interesting. This is asking, is there any, are there any programs on, on campus or services on campus that I would like to learn more about? And I have the option to let them know that I'm interested in learning a little bit more information so I can go through this list and see what those options are. And um, I, let's say I'm interested in the Latinx program and I can click that. Uh, and if I'm just interested in learning that, I can continue. If I want to choose more than one, then I can do that by scrolling through and touching my control button on a PC or a command button on a Mac and holding that down and using my mouse to click. So I'm, I'm interested in on-campus housing, so COCC does have residence halls and you can live on campus, and so I'm going to choose that, and then both are listed, and the college will know to send me information about those things and click continue. Now we come back to that check, application checklist and notice that all of our sections are complete. So this is exciting because we're ready to submit the application and there is a note saying that by submitting, I'm saying everything I've shared here is true. If that's the case, we can click submit application and then we'll be asked to um, submit the application fee after this, um, but this is the exciting part. Click that button. We've applied, and once you do the same, you'll have applied. Congratulations.